And now, and Trump then, versus Streep, or is it Streep versus Trump? It is not Kramer versus Kramer, for which she did win Best Supporting Actress, by the way, her first Academy Award. It's the actress's discussion of Donald Trump at the Golden Globes last night. It inspired some, it incensed others. It came as Meryl Streep accepted the Cecil B. DeMille Lifetime Achievement Award. Watch this. There was one performance this year that stunned me. It, it sank its hooks in my heart, not because it was good, it was, there was nothing good about it, <laughs> but it was effective and it did its job. It made its intended audience laugh and show their teeth. It was that moment when the person asking to sit in the most respected seat in our country imitated a disabled reporter, someone he outranked in privilege, power, and the capacity to fight back. It. <laughs> It kind of broke my heart when I saw it, and I still can't get it out of my head because it wasn't in a movie. It was real life. And this instinct to humiliate when it's modeled by someone in the public platform, by someone powerful, it filters down into everybody's life because it kind of gives permission for other people to do the same thing. Disrespect invites disrespect. Violence incites violence. When the powerful use their position to bully others, we all lose. That's Meryl Streep. And Meryl Streep was referencing Donald Trump's comments about a disabled reporter. He, the comments about more than a year ago. He, he was talking about Serge Kovaleski. He's a New York Times reporter. Then and now, Many see what Trump did as mocking the man, but the president-elect denies that that was his intention. Sending out a message this morning, also taking on Meryl Streep, he wrote this in a series of tweets. Meryl Streep, one of the most overrated actresses in Hollywood, doesn't know me, but attacked last night at the Golden Globes. She is a Hillary flunky who lost big. For the 100th time, I never mocked a disabled reporter, would never do that, but simply showed him groveling when he totally changed a 16-year-old story that he had written in order to make me look bad. Just more very dishonest media. Joining us right now to discuss is Donald Trump supporter, political consultant Harlan Hill, Democratic strategist Danielle McLaughlin, and CNN political analyst and deputy culture editor at the New York Times, Patrick Healy. Thanks, guys, for all being here. Patrick, we clearly we see the tweets, but importantly here, you spoke with Donald Trump about this overnight. What was he like when you talked to him about this? Sure. I was uh, working on our Golden Globes coverage here at the Times and decided, you know, why not try to reach him and see what he has to say about, about Meryl Streep. So uh, I called him up. He answered. And he hadn't uh, watched the Globes. He hadn't uh, seen the speech or he said heard about the speech at that point. Uh, but his reaction was was very quick. He sort of described Meryl Streep as, um, you know, as a Hillary lover and as someone whose attacks were on him were uh, predictable. You know, but I, I pushed him on the the argument you know that she was making was that he was using his own skills as a as a performer and a showman in an insidious way in the in the way of uh, mocking uh, Serge Kovaleski here at the Times uh, and sort of whipping an audience into a frenzy whenever he kind of wants it and you know he as he's done many times before and he said in the tweet sort of pushed back hard uh, against that saying that he wasn't mocking Serge and and that he was sort of attacking him for what what Trump said was changing his story but I think the the point is is that all of this stuff is still very live wire for for Donald Trump he comes mm -hmm. out of uh, a Hollywood culture over the last 15 years he has always been extremely proud of his ratings on the apprentice he talked about his poll numbers like he used to his ratings and it, it was something it clearly that uh, you know that that struck a nerve because he does see himself as kind of a cultural figure hey, hey Patrick you said something casually that I don't want to let slide which is that you called him up uh, to find out his reaction, and he picked up. This is the president-elect of the United States of America. A man in two weeks will be the president. Yeah. Uh, and you were able to easily, I, I think, get him on the phone to comment uh, on a speech at the Golden Globes. Uh, why do you think he chose to just pick up and talk about that as opposed to, you know, holding any news conferences over the last six months? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, John. I mean, I uh, started covering him in July of, of 2015. Uh, you know, as you do, as many journalists do, we, we have uh, phone numbers, cell phone numbers, home phone numbers of sources. Uh, as you know, John, when you call a source every day on their cell phone at 11 p.m., eventually they block you and they don't pick up. So we try to be a little bit strategic here. Now that I'm deputy culture editor uh, and I was covering the Golden Globes, I wanted to talk to him about that. I also called him up on, on election night when I was a political reporter at 10.30 and he answered the phone and uh, he, he talked to me a little bit about, uh, you know, about winning that night. But your point's very fair, John. I mean, he hasn't held a, a press conference in months now. He's doing so on Wednesday. Reaching him at midnight with the purpose of talking about uh, Meryl Streep's speech uh, you know, you have to make a judgment as a reporter, okay, are you going to then add on a question uh, about his, uh, you know, business relationships overseas? I'm not diminishing those whatsoever, but I had to make the decision that this was sort of a, a time and a place uh, to ask the question right. that mm -hmm. I wanted answered and, uh, and then move on. Yeah. Harlan, what's your reaction to Meryl Streep and how Donald Trump reacted speaking to Patrick about it at length last night and then taking to Twitter to continue the discussion this morning. Well, I'll say none of this surprises me. Uh, while Meryl Streep was busy politicizing the Golden Globes last night, Hillary Clinton was a couple of blocks from where we sit right now um, at a Broadway performance and she received several standing ovations from the crowd, went on for, for 10 minutes or something like that. And I think that that perfectly illustrates the perfect metaphor for the divide in this country. The coastal elites live in a bubble, whether it's LA, people like Meryl Streep and Hollywood elites or us here in New York. And there are many people in the, in the, in the middle Keep of going, America. But this is, this in the is a video of There it is, right there. In the heartland of America that are really suffering. Their jobs are not sufficient. They haven't had pay increases in years. Uh, they fear that ISIS is metastasizing and that it poses a threat here in the United States. And, and you know, Meryl Streep had an opportunity, if she's going to politicize this event, to talk about things that actually affect everyday Americans, not this ridiculous uh, gossip. I, I think that he should he should apologize for this and let's move on. Oh, okay. But, it, you know, I, let's just get past this. Just to be clear, we, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not gossip. You know, he... he said what he said he about Serge Kovalevsky, but you did say he should apologize. Yeah. So, you know, I want to give you credit yeah, for saying that right it. now. It would have been nothing a year a year sure. ago. Continue. To yeah. Harlan's Sorry. point, uh, Danielle, you know, Meryl Streep, you know, she said what she said, what she just showed mm -hmm. there. And then she continued to speak, and she said a little something else here that I think illustrates what Harlan's getting at. Let's play that. So Hollywood is crawling with outsiders and foreigners. And if we kick them all out, you'll have nothing to watch but football and mixed martial arts, which are not the arts. So I don't like the formulation where you call certain Americans real Americans and not others. If you're a coastal elite, you can't like football. But isn't that type of language, that part right there, which is talking about football and mixed martial arts, why does it have to be separate? from loving Hollywood in the film. I think you're right, and I think of everything that she said in that speech, I think that was one thing that she probably could have taken out or taken back. What she was talking about was empathy. She talked about the Hollywood foreign press, right? So she's talking about this idea that actors on a daily day basis, what they do is they walk in the shoes of other people. And that is what you do when you're empathetic. She was talking about this notion of Donald Trump as a reality TV personality and this interesting confluence between reality and performance because he created a persona, he campaigned on a persona. But what that persona did in November 2015 was absolutely and disgracefully mock a reporter. The next thing that he did is he's never taken it back and he's never acknowledged it. And you think about the things that Trump has done over, over the years. He mocked Carly Fiorina for her face. He did the same thing uh, to Ted Cruz's wife. He called Hillary Clinton not presidential. And w the saying goes, you know, show me who you are and I'll believe you. So his pushback to Meryl was, she doesn't know me. But what we saw for months in the campaign and for a decade prior was a, a person who was willing to latch on to a physical characteristic uh, and make a mockery of it. And she stood up to that. And I think that's something that isn't necessarily political, but it's human. So maybe this, maybe, maybe not. This comes up in a press conference uh, that is scheduled for, for okay. Wednesday. We will see. Uh, not only if the question is asked, but if the press conference <laughs> will happen at all. Um, what Trump are we going to see, do you think? When you talk about, you know, Danielle's kind of getting at like two Trumps. He doesn't know me, it, yeah. you know, but what Trump are we going to see? Well, he said, you know, when he accepted victory on election night, he said that he wanted to be a president for everyone. And I hope that that's the tone that he strikes on Inauguration Day. But he's fighting against some real forces that I don't think are totally fair to him. You have people in the media, which Meryl Streep touched on last night, calling him literally Hitler. 
They are comparing the president-elect of the United States to Hitler. And I think that if she's talking about giving license to violence, that sort of rhetoric, which has become mainstream in the media, is totally unacceptable. People at the New York Times, Meryl even Street people on this network that. have Meryl said Street that. Meryl Streep didn't say ahead, that, Patrick. though. Meryl Streep, no, Meryl Streep didn't say that. I think we need to, she didn't even mention Trump by name. Clearly, she was talking uh, about him, and she made different sort of strategic decisions in there. But uh, having covered uh, the Globes, having covered, you know, Hollywood, no one, uh, you would think, in a way, there could be a very sort of predictable, full frontal, name-calling assault. But what Meryl Streep was pointing out was what a lot of journalists and voters saw, which was that Donald Trump had a way of, of reaching his audience, mm -hmm. of communicating, of performing at his rallies that were incredibly well attended, that was effective. And from her point of view, it was uh, effective in the worst possible way, that he divided people, he riled people up, showed Hard. their teeth, you know, for instance. But the yeah, name we, calling, I, I mean, Hitler. No. We got to go. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, Harlan. I, okay. I, I like both your points here. Wednesday, news conference. A few weeks after that, Meryl Streep will be nominated for another Academy Award because it happens at this time every year. So stay tuned for both of those events. John, taking on Meryl Streep.